All right, we're going to get started. And tonight, we are going to study, we're going to continue with our topic, the wisdom of the world versus the wisdom of God. And I want to clarify what I mean by the wisdom of the world. This is not wisdom that man has that God enables him to do when God gave man dominion over the earth to, for example, build airplanes or design air conditioning or build automobiles or design and build computers. That's not the wisdom of, of the world that we're, we're referring to in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So the wisdom of the world that is being referred to in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and why don't we turn there, because that's where we're going to start, is a wisdom that opposes God. It stands against God's wisdom. It fights against God. So it opposes God. That's the type of wisdom, the wisdom of the world, that is in opposition to the wisdom of God. So, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul states, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, and that in the context is the wisdom of the world. Not with wisdom of words, he's to preach the gospel, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. The wisdom of words nullifies or makes ineffective the preaching of the cross of Christ. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So you have the wisdom of God which enables a person to receive eternal life as a free gift, and the righteousness of God is upon them, and they're given salvation as a free gift. All of this by, by the power of God, referred to in verse 18. But the world's wisdom considers that foolish. That which would give them what they really seek in eternity, they consider to be foolish. So the wisdom of the world is associated with a source. The source of this wisdom of the world that would consider the cross of Christ foolish is satanic. Its root cause is Satan and the fallen angels that are opposing God. So we can see an example of that in Ephesians chapter 2. Associating the wisdom of the world with the one that's called the prince of this world, and he's also called the God of this world, and he's also called the prince of the power of the air, and that is Satan. So turn to Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, start in verse 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. And the course of this world is associated with the wisdom of the world that opposes God and considers the gospel foolish. So they walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit 
that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Notice that the world has a course. It has a path it is walking on. God refers to this world and defines it as the present evil world. It is influenced by evil spirits, fallen angels. So the path it is on in verse 2 is according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit, so you see how Satan is a spirit, and he has a spirit that has a wisdom of this world. The prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So before we got saved, we were being led by the spirit of disobedience. We were led by, we we're walking on the path of this world. And God, the Bible says, delivered us from this present evil world is one of the reasons he's going to deliver us from that present evil world is what the Lord Jesus Christ did. But the world is following this wisdom from the prince of the power of the air, and you'll see it throughout the scriptures. And so let's take a look at the very, the very first thing that God told Adam in the book of Genesis. And let's see how the root and source of the wisdom of this world that opposes God was active in the Garden of Eden. The same wisdom of the world that considers the preaching of the cross to be foolish was active back there in the Garden of Eden. Please turn back to the book of Genesis and let's go to Genesis chapter, chapter two. Genesis chapter two, verse 15. So God makes Adam, puts him in the garden to dress it and keep it. And then in verse 16, the first thing he says to Adam, the first thing he commanded Adam, the first record of God speaking to Adam, God says to Adam, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, God has another name. He is the truth. This is his wisdom, which is always true. This part of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's God the Son communicating with Adam and telling him that you, you shall not eat of this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because if you do, you're going to die. And that's all true, 100% true. Because God is 100% true. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. That's what he is. He cannot lie. But let's watch an alternative instruction that Adam is given. Adam and Eve are given an alternative instruction, and it came through Eve, and turn over to Genesis chapter 3 and start in verse one. And I want you to notice the wisdom of the world, the God of this world coming in and see how it operates. It's the same wisdom, as I mentioned, that holds a cross of Christ to be a foolish thing. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. So that's a questioning of God's word. That's what the wisdom of the world does. Yea, hath God said. The world will question the cross of Christ. The world will question the existence of God. The world will question whether the Bible is relevant in any way. And that is the source and the root of this wisdom of the world. You find it right here. Satan says to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. And here's the wisdom that comes from Satan. The Bible says, by the way, that he's the father of lies. And the wisdom of the world that opposes the cross of Christ and is opposing the word of God right here, it's from the father of lies. That's its source. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Well, that's not true. There is the father of lies at work. You shall not surely die. There's nothing true about that. Somebody's saying, oh, the preaching of the cross is foolish. You can't get saved by just believing something. But that's not true at all. That is resisting the truth of God. Here, Satan was resisting the truth of God by saying, you shall not surely die. And then he gives an explanation. Now, I want you to see the wisdom of the world and its effect on this woman, Eve. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so it appealed to her stomach. The Bible warns about those that are evil. They make their God their belly. Their appetite and their lust is their God and not the God that created the heavens and the earth and loves them and wants them to rule and reign with him forever in pleasure and joy. No, they make their earthly belly their God. Their God is their belly, the Bible says. So she was left, she was led by her own desire for food the tree was good for food number one two it was pleasant to the eyes man falls for that if they see something that looks appealing to them they oftentimes will go for it if it pleases their eyes so many people have married spouses based on they were attractive even though they were evil and nasty people and they found that out the hard way hard way and there were warning signs about these people but they let their eyes lead them oh they're attractive therefore i'm going to marry this person or i'm going to have this person as my girlfriend or some lady wants to have this person as their boyfriend because of the way they look yeah well you know they're rotten inside and they find out the hard way but eve was deceived like the rest of us are often deceived by our eyes the bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not walking by what we see out here. We're walking by faith in the evidence of God's word. But as the rest of the world falls for things by the way they appear, so did Eve. It was pleasant to her eyes. And then we're talking about the wisdom of the world. Where does that come in here? Well, look at the third thing. And a tree, to be desired to make one wise. Ah, it's gonna make you wise. I desire that because it's gonna make me wise. Even though God's wisdom said, don't do it, I'm gonna follow this devilish wisdom of the world because it's gonna make me wise. 
So she took the fruit thereof and did eat it. And what happened to her? Oh, she surely died, just like God said. Did the eating of this good food or the pleasantness to the eyes or that this would make her wise, did any of that, did any of that save her from death? No, it did not save her from death. None of it did. In fact, she died and none of that self was of any use to her to save her from death. And that's what it's about when people are rejecting the cross of Christ. It's the same thing. They consider it foolish. Let's turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. That is what you have to get in your head, that the preaching of the cross is the power of God to save the believer. And it does save the believer when they believe it, because it says here, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. You go back to the book of Romans. Why don't we do that? Romans 1, verse 16. Turn back to Romans 1, verse 16. And you see in verse 16, the power of God operating. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. See the power of God operating? The power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Yes, that is true. Just like God said back then, thou shalt surely die if you eat from this tree. Well, God is telling you that his power saves you if you believe the preaching of the cross. And his power is operating. It is not your religion. It is not what you did other than believing. Meaning it's not your water baptism and church membership and inviting him into your heart, your sacraments and your confessing your sins and your different observances and rituals. Get it in your brain. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans shows this operational. You go and you see that it's the power of God unto salvation. And then you get to the introduction of the preaching of the cross in Romans chapter 3. So we read in, verse, in Romans chapter 3, verse 21, but now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, done away with the law of God to save you, eliminated the law of God to save you, but it's God's own righteousness in verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. There it is again. What do they receive? The righteousness of God through the power of God that covers you and saves you with his righteousness and his power saves you and his righteousness is upon you because you did one thing, believe. And what did you believe? You believed in the preaching of the cross. How do we know that? You go down to verse 25 whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, that means a sacrifice, a payment for your sins, through faith in his blood. Where was his blood shed on the cross? What is your faith in him dying for you on the cross and in his resurrection? And it's free. This is the preaching of the cross. The preaching of the cross, it's free. Verse 24, being justified freely 
by his grace. Now, the wisdom of the world doesn't like this. The wisdom of the religious system doesn't like it. If you say this is all you need, they'll say, no, there's more to it than that. And they'll even use the word of God out of context against the preaching of the cross. If you say all you need is belief to be saved, they'll say no. Faith is without works is dead. So they won't want to believe Romans chapter 3 and Romans chapter 1 and Romans chapter 4 and Romans chapter 5 based on something they found in the book of James, an apostle that was never sent to them. They'll use the wisdom of the world to try to mix the gospel up and frankly pervert the gospel of Christ. That's what God says in Galatians 1. Any man preach any other gospel unto you. So they introduce works, repenting of your sins, and any sort of works into the preaching of the cross. They're perverting the gospel of Christ. And that's wisdom of the world that's saying, oh, it's foolish for you to say you only have to believe that Christ died for you on the cross and he was raised from the dead for you to receive eternal life. You're, you're teaching that to us, that's foolish. No, faith without works is dead, they will tell you. Often with a waving of the finger, I've had them do that to me. There's more to it than that, they will say. No, there isn't any more to, than that, more to it than that because God's power saved us and God's righteousness covers us and God's gift was given to us, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is wisdom of the world to oppose God and oppose the gospel of Christ. Even using God's word to do it is wisdom of the world because that's not what God is doing. God is telling you that people will say, oh no, you must keep the commandments. Oh, well, God is telling you right here that in verse 21, the righteousness of God now, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. And without works and what free means it's without works so you go through romans and you see all these passages like one of my favorite of all time romans 4 or 5 but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness and then you see the preaching of the cross in romans 4 at the end of the chapter Romans 4, verse 24, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, and that's righteousness, if, here's the condition, you ready for it? If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, there he is dying for our sins, and was raised again for our justification, there's a resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you see the preaching of the cross in Romans 5 as well. It's found through there. Now, what's interesting is there's a parallel. And of course, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the preaching of the cross. He gives you the eternal life gift solely because you believe it's free. It's a gift. But watch how people oppose it when you preach that to them. And know it's the wisdom of the world that call is calling it a foolish thing that you're preaching to them. Turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's start up again. Verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. No, the wisdom of the world doesn't know God. They rejected him back there in Genesis and in the Old Testament. And today they get blinded by Satan because of their unbelief. And in the tribulation, even when they know he's pouring his wrath upon them, they're going to be cursing him and blaspheming him in their pain. And it's astonishing that 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 is what man does. 
but it's this wisdom of man that opposes and fights against God, along with their father who fights against God. What's God? God told the religious leaders of Israel that fought against him that they were of their father, the devil, and he was a murderer from the beginning. And, and he said that you're doing the will of your father, the devil, in, in John chapter 8. So here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. No, they did not understand the preaching of the cross, and many of them do not to this day that are professing Christians. They confuse it all. But it pleased God in verse 21, by the foolishness the world sees as foolish, foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them that are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ is the power of God, and he is the wisdom of God. Let's go to the end of the chapter. And the purpose of God choosing the cross of Christ is that he can be a just God and have the crimes against him paid for by himself. God in the form, form of a man, and he could also be the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. But the end of this chapter says there's another purpose in that, that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, you can't say you did anything to receive eternal life other than believe in what God already did for you at the cross of Christ. Let me repeat that. You cannot glory in your flesh about your own salvation because your flesh had nothing to do with it. You decided to believe what God already did for you at the cross of Christ and in his resurrection. So verse 29, no flesh can glory in his presence in, in the salvation that you receive through the gift that God has given you. This is just like Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, that no flesh should glory in his presence. It says there that, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, the salvation is not of your flesh. It's not of yourselves, the salvation that is, is not of yourselves, okay? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't boast because it's not of any works you did. It's not your water baptism, your sacraments, your confessing your sins, your walk in the aisle for Jesus or any of those things. It's not you being a good person in your works. None of those things. You can't boast in it because you didn't do it. Christ did it and you simply believed it. So Ephesians proclaims that lest any man should boast, it's not a works, and it's by grace through faith. Here it says, no flesh could glory in his presence. Back in Romans, I wanted to read this, but I forgot to read it. In Romans 3, uh, it says back there, um, by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Where is boasting, it says in Romans. Where is boasting in Romans? Like in Ephesians, where is it? Boasting is excluded in the book of Romans. That's the word used, excluded by the law of works. Nay, but by the law of faith, you are under a law of God, a concrete, eternal law of God, where it's called the law of faith. And you cannot boast because you didn't do the work he did. And you simply believed it. So here, no flesh can glory in his presence, but of him, 
are ye, watch this, of him, of God, not you, of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. See, he's our wisdom. Jesus Christ is. He's made unto us our righteousness. He's made unto us our sanctification. He's made unto us our, our redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And I'm going to end it on that note tonight. We can only glory in the Lord because the power of God saved us through us believing that he died for us. And when we believe he died for our sins and crimes against God, then our sins and crimes against God are forgiven. When we believe he was raised from the dead, then God promises us we're going to be raised from the dead, eternal, immortal, incorruptible, in joy and pleasure forevermore. No pain, sorrow, or suffering. All right. Thank you for listening tonight. God bless you. And we'll resume again next Thursday.